We know it's man generated. We know it's man operated. We know it's man birth. How can a man destroy the call and destiny of God on your life and on my life? You know, how can a man abort God's ultimate call? It was Jeremiah that said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I called you by name, a prophet to the nations. So we're going to just see some heathenistic government rise up and just begin to just poison the saints. You know, so God told me today to be encouraged. And to not fear. You know, many times when man, the only one we have to fear is God. He's able to destroy both body and soul. Amen. He said, be not afraid of men in their faces. And do not despise your youth. Amen. So, no matter how long you've known the Lord, how much word you know, don't despise small beginnings. God is still speaking and he told me, you know, Joseph had a day like this. He was resented of his brothers. Loved by the Father, sold by his brothers, just as Jesus' brothers sold him. Amen? Amen. Sold him out. Judas sold out Jesus Amen. for silver. Amen? Hung himself later. <clears throat> but yet Joseph, before he was exalted, he had to be humbled. He was brought low. And it didn't feel very good. And then he became the ruler of Potiphar's household. Amen? And then a great famine brought his family and brought even his father across a hot desert. You know, the old man, he didn't want to go. Jacob didn't want to go when he was forced to go. He was brought before his own son didn't know who he was. And he told his brothers when they said, this is, this is our brother that we sold. He has certainly killed us. And he told them, what you intended for evil was actually God's plan for good. And that's why I said that song that you guys sang at the end, though man may work it naturally and man may use it against us carnally to bring persecution on the saints persecution on the church division among brethren but yet God in the background is also doing something too he's working it for the better of our good the one question we should always ask is where is God in this trial where is he in this situation amen. he was the fourth man in the fire amen, amen. Nebuchadnezzar built that hot furnace and heated it up he said behold i see a fourth one and his remnant is as the son of god he is the fourth man in the fire amen as we are in the fire of this tribulation and our trial how ignorant would it be for us to not see that even in this we have a christ amen, amen. we have jesus in our midst you know the Lord started talking to me on the positive side because I've been, I've been kind of allowing those voices, those foreign voices. You know, those apostles said, for there are many voices, but you must discern the difference. For not all spirits are, are of God, but you shall know for that Antichrist spirit will confess not that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen? Amen. We know who is the Antichrist by he who does not confess Jesus as the Son of God. So anyone that's confessing any other doctrine is not of God. So it's the wrong spirit. What is God's spirit saying? Hold fast what you have. Hold on. Don't worry. Do not fear what men can do. Amen? But rather fear our maker. Amen? Amen. We're living in the hour of the virgin bride brought up out of the church. I think things are going to eventually get better. You know, we don't want to be like all those. And then they call the church doomsday preachers. And yet man has also become a doomsday preacher in his, own, in his own way. Just prophesying and predicting all the negative. So many people are going to die. So many people are going to lose their jobs. Amen? Amen? You know, it's like, you know, anybody who has a father, would they just forsake him and not feed their children? Right? Jesus said, I'm not giving you a serpent if you ask me for a stone says, if you ask me for bread, I'll give you bread. I'm not going to give you a viper, amen? amen? He sees us as his children. And uh, Jesus said to watch, be ready. At least I come upon you in an hour that you're not expected. We're living in the hour of the virgin bride. That means we, we have to be a people living by repentance. We should not let the sun go down on our anger like the scripture says. But also should not let the sun go down without repenting as well. 
Because it's in that repentance that our stains are removed, our wrinkles are removed, and we remain fit for that transportation to be caught up and met with him. Amen? Amen. We cannot go soiled. We cannot go stained. We have to be a people living sanctified. And the word sanctified means holy. It means justified. Justified means just as if I've never sinned by putting our faith in him. You know, because should it, we should never live like it's not the last day. We should live in that expectation he might come any moment. Amen? Any moment he could come. And we have to live that way by making sure we're not stained, wrinkled, or blemished. We have to make sure to keep our spiritual garments white. Amen? Amen. Well, the Lord told me, what do you have to worry about? You know, if a man was married to a woman, or raised in that Eastern culture by the Father, and we have not met yet, in a sense, we have not come together with the bridegroom, the spiritual doesn't make sense to us men in the, in the natural, you know? <laughs> But spiritually, we have that we are that bride to the bridegroom. So we have the bridegroom, the one between us is the Father, preparing us and making us ready to meet Him and come together with with our Christ. How how foolish for us to think that something's going to happen to us. What would the Father say to His Son? Wow, well, Son, you know she was a good bride, but I just I let her be destroyed. You know, I have to find you another one. <laughs> we are that bride. Therefore, he must protect us. But we have to make sure and do our part. Make sure we keep our garments clean. You know? Because in the spirit, we wear his righteousness, but it has the ability to be made dirty. Amen? It can be made soiled. For example, you know, you go into a place and it's all dusty and you're wearing a white t-shirt. You know what's going to happen. It doesn't take much to dirty it. Right? So... Is it in the spirit realm? We must make sure and keep that garment clean. We make make sure and live how he said to live and do what he said to do. Make sure we understand what he said we shouldn't do. And then pray for mercy where we where we fall short. Because none of us are without sin. He says, For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, there were three types of there there are three Examples, you know, one of them that was raptured up, I mentioned it many, many times, was Enoch. And Enoch, <clears throat> we know that Seth replaced Abel. Enoch, I believe he was the seventh. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. He lived like a long, long time too, like hundreds of years. And then it says, and Enoch was not, for God took him. And we got to learn from that example of what that means, that he walked with God. In other words, for us to walk with God, you know, God cannot have sin in his presence for very long. Amen? He says, let no flesh glory in my presence. So we got to watch our, our everything. That's not going to get us saved. That will take the wrinkle out of your spiritual garment. But it won't commend you to Christ and get you salvation. But it's our... It's our responsibility to make sure we keep our garments white, keep our garments unstained, keep our garments unwrinkled by watching our fleshly character as well, our moods, our emotions, our responses. And remember that it matters what people see. For when they see us responding and reacting in the nature of Christ, this is what brings conviction that produces conversion because they say, wow, I see there really is a difference in the way that you live, in the way that you are. And if we act like the world, if we look like the world and we smell like the world, then the world is justified because we're just like the world. Amen? Amen. And we'll bring no conviction but shame on the Father. Amen? Amen. So what did Enoch have in common with, with God in that he walked with God and who you walk with, you're like. Amen? Amen. Who you associate with, you're like. You associate with a group of people and they all like wearing hats. Eventually you'll find yourself in a hat. Amen? <laughs> right, Chris? <laughs> Let me go get my hat real quick, Chris. <laughs> but you get the principles the same, right? What we associate with. We have to make sure that it's uh, separated. We're called for, the church is called to be the separated ones. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
Separated means to be holy. We're kept cleansed by His blood, but by our repentance. We have to live a repentant life. <coughs> Amen? See, this man walked not alone as the world walks, making his own decisions and seeking out his own counsel. But yet those that walk close to God, every decision is, is, is discussed with God. Every plan and purpose is, they have a conversation with God. God, what should I do in this? And what should I do in that? They don't just go about making independent decisions. That's called single. <laughs> Amen? All their decisions were discussed with God. All their thoughts were thought with God. Amen? They had him in mind. Just like a husband who considers his, his wife's views on a subject you know everything in like a marriage is to be discussed not argued sometimes you argue but it's to be discussed and as you discuss it the, the husband considers what the wife says but it's up to the husband to seek out God to get the spiritual direction and what should be done amen amen and when it falls out that order then the curse comes on that relationship and it can even come on a nation and this is why we see a lot of things that we're seeing because the household order has been reversed it's been perverted it's been messed up you know adam went into his sin with his eyes wide open he knew what he was doing and it was eve who was deceived amen eve was deceived and but yet god in his mercy you know, Adam was a type of Christ in that he still stood by her during the judgment. Amen? When she sinned, Adam was right by her side. And when we sin, Jesus is right by our side. Can you see it? When he found him in the bushes, hiding, covered in the fig leaves, calling him to attention, Adam stood right there. He could have ran off and said, this, this is your problem, but... He loved her and he he cherished her and he wanted to protect her and he was dealt with by God with her and that's what Christ has done for us. Amen? Amen. Can you guys see it? Amen. Protecting her for she is a vessel of, of a more higher emotions. Amen? And uh, But Adam was very sober minded. He knew exactly what he did. He said and he knew he did. Amen? <clears throat> Excuse me. Adam stood by Eve. Amen. You know, there's a, a doctrine out right now that's so anti-scripture, it's not even funny. But I come across it, you know, things get suggested to you on YouTube. And it's men, supposedly world men, smart worldly men, men that are rich and want to teach you how to get rich. And one thing that they're teaching is how the wives have an ability to hinder the, the, the husband. It's almost like don't even need to be with her because she's holding you down and holding you back. <laughs> Amen? I was, I kept seeing that a few different videos and I thought, I didn't have to watch them. I seen the title, I was like, wow, that sure is uh, falling into 1 Timothy, the first, fourth chapter, where he says, forbidding to marry. marry. Amen? We're seeing it more and more unfolded. Division of families, where God is a reconciler. He wants to bring families together. He wants to bring he wants to reconcile that which has been separated by satan and but yet man in his ignorance and selfishness wants to divide amen wants everything to be his own so what do we do we have to live a repentant life in order to to possibly get caught up should he come we have to live a separated life amen <clears throat> one of, excuse me one of the themes if you read the book of Revelations, Jesus seems to say over and over, repent. He says, repent. I mean, it's all in there. When you read it, he tells them constantly, they're admonished, repent. Hold fast what you have. I'm coming soon. He says, repent and change your ways or I will come and fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Amen. And it says his tongue is like a two-edged sword. It's the word. Amen. So we see Enoch walked with God and was not because he was like God and because he stood 
with God. He walked with God. He talked like God. He acted like God. Amen? And our uh, second one we seen again, at, like I mentioned last time, was Elijah. That mysterious old man they called a the prophet in the wilderness that seemed to appear and reappear wherever the Lord would send him. Man with supernatural powers able to part the waters at his word, able to shut up the rain and bring the rain back. Only brave enough man to stand up against kings and queens. Amen? Amen. Fearless. And one day, he too was raptured. Well, the Bible says that is he was tra training up Elisha that all of a sudden a great whirlwind came and a chariot came and swept him up and he told Elisha that asked him for the double portion he says you asked a hard thing but if you see me rise he says then you will get your request and as it went up he seen it and he drops his mantle and Elisha gets his mantle amen are you guys alive <laughs> God is really good. See, that's a picture of us being raptured up, caught up, the Bible says, swept away in an instant. Nobody was expecting that. Because all of a sudden, a wind came and swept them up. Could you imagine? All of a sudden, you know, you're living a life unstained because you're, ma you're maintaining that through your repentance. Amen? And all of a sudden, something stirs up and you're swept away. Wouldn't that be amazing? Not have to sit here through the tribulation. Not have to lose your head. Not have to suffer the plagues and sores and heat. The bittering of the water. When something strikes the, water, the earth and goes into the water. And a third of it is turned bitter. And many people die because it becomes wormwood. Amen? Amen. You know, Jesus is the first resurrected. It says he's the... Colossians 1.18 says he is the firstborn of the dead. The first. Christ himself is the firstborn of the dead and head of the church. Amen? Amen. That's why, you know, I was telling, I was talking to Anna and I was telling her, you know, we need to be really creative. We need to be really clever. 